Bees Life Super Organism. Hello everybody and welcome to our very first beekeeping lesson. Today I will give you a brief review of the hive and the different roles bees take in the beautiful, complex and wise social structure of a bee swarm. I encourage you to read Rudolf Steiner's enlightening book Bees in which he gives the spiritual aspect of bee life and is the source of which biodynamic beekeeping was developed. A swarm that just swarmed out of his own hive and landed on a branch of a tree is one of the most beautiful experiences one can have. A swarm is composed of about 30,000 bees, 99% are worker bees, 1% are drones, and only one queen. In his book, Bees, Rudolf Steiner refers to a bee swarm as one organism, which he calls a bean. Therefore, the first and most basic thing a swarm has to do in order to survive is to build its own physical body, meaning the honeycombs. The structure and design of such combs are astonishing. Firstly, the geometric shape of the hexagonal comb is the most stable structure and the most economic in terms of surface area. Secondly, all the surface walls of the hexagonal cells are with no exception 0.07 millimeters. So how do the bees manage to build their combs? The bees literally hang together using gravity and creating a chain form. Then they start to sweat out tiny platelets of wax from their abdomen glands, which they heat, knead, and design as astonishing hexagonal honeycombs. Their next task is to contact the plant realm. The bees fly to different species of flowers and gather nectar as well as pollen for their food supply. Normally, in a period of three weeks, a bee will fly about 1000 kilometers, which are around 600 miles, and visit around 3000 flowers each day, gathering only one teaspoon of honey. After the bees store the nectar in their combs, they start to transform it into honey. They evaporate the liquid from the nectar so that eventually it becomes honey. In other words, the nectar, which is 80% liquid and 20% sugar, becomes 20% liquid and 80% sugars, meaning honey. Bees pollinate nature meaning also our food. 40% of what we eat is due to the hard work of bee pollination, which is critical to our nutrition. Bees collect pollen and use it as one of their food supplies, storing it in their honeycombs they built initially. The next task bees fulfill is to produce propolis, or nature's antibiotics, so to speak. This is an extremely abundant substance made of 50% raisin, 30% beeswax, 10% pollen, 5% vitamins and minerals, and 5% essential oils. Propolis is antiseptic, antiviral, antibiotic, and antifungal, and therefore the bees spread it all over the hive. If, for instance, a mouse enters the hive, the bees sting it in order to kill it. But then there is a problem. They can't throw the mouse out of the hive because it's too heavy. So what do the bees do? That's right. They mummify it with propolis to prevent rot and stench in the hive. In ancient Egypt, honey, bees, wax and propolis were used for mummification. The temperature of this beautiful superorganism is constant 36.6 degrees Celsius 
which are 97.88 Fahrenheit, the same as human body temperature. The bees, as sun beings, love heat and dryness, and therefore they keep the tendency to warm their home and keep it the same temperature all year long. But when it gets too hot outside, the bees will look for water. Bring it back to the hive, then simultaneously release the water they found and flutter their wings in order to produce wind. Those two acts will cool the hive just like an air conditioner. Now there is a slight problem. Cooling the hive creates humidity. So the bees stand on the floor of the hive in a round form and start to flutter their wings again creating air circulation in the hive so that practically the bees are producing fresh air from outside in the hive and thus evacuate the moisture. In cold winters bees face the same challenge which is solved by thousands of bees vibrating their wings muscles together thus creating heat. By fall Wasps start hunting the bees from flowering trees or directly from the hive. And therefore, some bees are guarding the entrance of the hive in order to avoid wasps or other bees from different hives to enter their colony. Right next to the guarding bees are some other bees that stand on the landing floor fanning their wings and releasing a pheromone helping the young and inexperienced bees to find their way back home. While the queen is laying eggs, a new group of bees are distributing each egg a substance known as royal jelly. A multivitamin jelly, the bees produce from honey, pollen and enzymes they secrete which enables the egg to develop to the different stages from egg to larva, pupa and eventually to an adult bee. Now, like the most of us, we tend to clean our homes every now and then, and so it is with the bees. The bees are busy with sanitation work in their hives around the clock. Every material that is unnecessary to the bees in the hive is thrown out. Sick bees are casted out and thrown out of the hive. Bees defecate outside the hive. Eventually, the last task referring the worker bees is to take care of the queen. They clean her, they feed her, and keep her from getting hurt. Now, let's take a look at the drones for a moment. The drones develop and hatch out of their cells after 22 to 24 days compared to worker bees that hatch after 21 days. They're physically bigger and hairier than the worker bees. They don't have a sting and they don't know to eat by themselves. The worker bees have to feed them like in case of some human males we might know. The main task the drones fill is to fertilize the queen. When the queen flies to her nuptial flight, she is heading towards the sun and about 12 of the strongest drones fly with her and copulates with the queen during aviation. Then the queen has enough sperm in her that she could lay eggs for her entire life. In nature and in biodynamic beekeeping, which I will teach in this course, the queen's life expectancy is between 5 to 7 years. In conventional beekeeping method, it is one to three years. The queen develops and hatches from her cell after 16 days. She has few tasks as well. First of all, she has to lay her eggs. If she will have enough space, she'll lay between 1500 and 2000 eggs a day. Most of her eggs will be fertilized eggs meaning worker bees will hatch from them. 
Larger hexagonal cells are designated for drones and when the queen recognizes them, she will lay unfertilized eggs, meaning male bees will hatch. The queen represents the soul of the entire superorganism. If the queen is anxious or in stress, all the bees will be stressed as well. And on the contrary, a relaxed queen creates a calm colony.